Welcome to another episode in the uh, Open Source Contribution Series. Um, this episode will be a continuation of the last one where we worked on the uh, bulletin uh, utility, uh, which is a, a utility to parse um, uh, a selection of pinboard posts and convert them into a provided template. Um, if you haven't checked out that episode yet, uh, go watch it. It's, it's on my YouTube channel. Um, we're going to continue where we left off. Um, and today we will be working on actually um, generating the, the using the, the provided template to generate the, the final file, which contains all the data. Um, we also still need to work on, uh, we get back a tag, um, a string representing a set of tags. We, we need to split them up into a vector of strings. Um, um, and then we're going to extract some logic, um, simplify it a bit, add some tests. Um, and then we're, we're done, I guess. So yeah, so um, let's dive right in. So let's see where we left off last time. So let's open up the code. So I didn't do, uh, um, I, last time I mentioned I would do the, the templating or generate a template already. Uh, so the HTML and the CSS, I did that. And I did a couple of other things, uh, nothing related to the code itself, but mainly uh, cleaning up the uh, the repository, uh, adding uh, lights and stuff like that. Um, nothing has been pushed yet uh, to GitHub, but we'll get to that at the end of this episode, I hope. Um, so, so yeah, this is all still the same. Uh, we're still printing the title at the end uh, of this file, um, and this will have to change into actually um, generating the file. Um, and we'll probably still um, echo the file, the, the, the contents of the final file to, um, uh, to stand it out. And so you can pipe it to a file if you, if you want to. Um, so, yeah, so let me show you the, um, the actual template that I built. It's a really simple template uh, with some basic HTML and CSS. And so here we have, um, uh, we have four posts with uh, a title, um, uh, the description and the tags shown down here. And so based on the prefix in, within a tag, we can determine uh, what the tag actually represents. So we have the context. Uh, it's not always available, but, but when we have it, we show it here. Then we have the, the medium. So either a blog or a Reddit post or something on Stack Exchange, uh, the Stack Exchange network. Uh, and finally, we have a date. So the date isn't actually a tag, but it's shown in the same area as the, as the, as the other tags. Um, yeah, so this is relatively simple. Um, and this, uh, this is an example. Uh, so if we go to uh, example.html, you can see here um, where we actually, um, so here is, for example, a, a card um, and it shows the description, the title and some metadata. Uh, and this will have to be, uh, I've converted this to a template. So that's this part. And so in the first episode, we talked about using the crate called Terra, uh, which uses Jan Django templating language. And that's what you see here. So we've got a table. We're going to loop over all the cards that are given to, to, uh, to us. Um, and then for every two cards, we'll create a new, a new row in our table. Uh, we'll create it. We'll add a title uh, using the link and the title of the card. Then we'll add a description, um, and then based on the tags, we're going to add metadata. So, for example, if the tag starts with s colon, uh, we know we're dealing with a um, subdomain which we'll call context in this case. Um, and here we have the t colon, which is um, which is a type. Uh, so we're calling that medium here. And then we have the Alcon, which is the language, which I didn't uh, I didn't show in the example. But sometimes when I when I pin uh, an article that I find, I tag it with the language that is used within the article. For example, so for example, C, C Rust, or whatever. Um, and then finally, we have the um, uh, we have the date that we add to the card. Uh, so it's really simple. Uh, so now, if we go to main. Um, so let's see. So first of all, in order to actually be able to show the tags um, that we that we saw here, we have to actually be able to use these tags. 
And so to do that, we'll, we're going to have to split up this string into a fact of strings. And so first, so this will be a fact of string. And now um, uh, this is going to fail uh, because uh, we're not actually getting back a fact of string. So when we deserialize this data into this struct, we actually have a string um, a tags, which is a string instead of uh, a fact of strings. And so well, I guess let's let's see if we can actually get this data. Let's store this again. And I also need to, obviously I regenerated my API token last time uh, after the last episode. So we'll have to use, actually I need this part. I have to use the new token. Um, and we'll store that in a file. And if you look at the file, we can see, um, we can see here we have the tags, which is just a string, and the actual tags are separated by spaces. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to um, we're going to have to create our own deserializer for this specific uh, field of this struct. And Sela has support for this, so we're going to have to uh, go to the doc. So let's do that right now. So let's see, we've got. The serial documentation open, and so we are using uh, serial derive, uh, so that we don't have to actually create all the deserializers ourselves. Uh, but obviously, for this one, we will have to create our own. And so let's see. So we've got attributes. So the attributes are the so th these are the attributes that we set here: serialize, deserialize, and we have this serial rename because the the value here is called description. And we are actually using title um, <clears throat> and similarly extended is renamed to description and so we're going to have to find out so it has to be a, f a field attribute i assume let's see is there so this is the rename um let's see field attributes let's see what we need so we we, we use the rename already um, skip deserializing, serialize with, deserialize with. Right. So this is the one that we need. And so deserialize this field using a function that's different from its implementation of deserialize. Right, because the the uh, the default function for the string that we get back is to actually deserialize it into a uh, a string object in Rust, uh, whereas we actually want the fact of string in this case. So the given function must be callable as f and d, where d is deserialized, and so it can return a deserialized error or the object that we define, which in this case will be a, a fact of strings. Um, Fields used with deserialize with are not required to implement deserialize. Mm, yeah, okay. So I'm so in this case, since we're implementing deserialize with, we don't need to implement the deserialize trait itself. Okay, so let's start by adding this uh, attribute. And so, so this would be, the path would be the path to the actual function. In this case, the function will be um, within the current module. So we can just put the name of the function here. And so it will be something like um, from space delimited string, I guess. So we're, we're going uh, from a, we're going from space space limited string into a vec of strings. And so this is the function that we need to implement. Let's see. So this would be the uh, 
from space delimited string where this d is um, the deserializer and the result will be a fact <coughs> of strings or an error and um, right and so we could actually to get started we could return um, a vec of an owned empty string. Is that correct? What am I wait? Wait. Um, this needs to go here. this and so we need to right so we need to uh, move this I guess it's oh. Oh. a new variable deserializer right so we're not using this right now, um, but that's fine. <clears throat> and so this should actually still work. Now, the in the first episode, we uh, we um, found out that the Pinboard API has a five minute <clears throat> um, uh, a rate limit of five minutes on the endpoint that we're using, which is the all posts endpoint. Um, so that's annoying. So um, we are going to add some tests which would not require us to use actually the pinboard API. Uh, but for now, we'll, we'll continue as is and we'll figure out if it works once we have something working. So, um, so let's see. Um, see if we can implementing deserialize. Yeah, so basically, this is basically the same as what we are implementing right now. Um, uh, let's see. Let's see if we can find a good example. <clears throat> Actually, deserialize and deserialize. We don't actually need to implement the visitor uh, trade. Um, trying to find a good example of how we would implement this. Is the other way around. Um, let's see. When you want to drive is not getting the job done. Well, I'm pretty sure drive will get the job done for us. So let's see. Well, actually Derive is not getting the job done for us, but um, when using this deserialize with, <clears throat> so let's see.
Um, see if we can find a good example. Apparently I've already searched for this at some point in the past. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> so we use the, so deserialize implemented for string. And so we can, right. So we can go to a, a stir and then from a stir, we can go to a, to a vec of strings. All right. That makes sense. So. Let's see, so we'll, we want the stir. Um, and I guess we can actually use deserialize. On the deserializer itself. And this would return uh, an error as all deserializers do. So we would either return the error or we would get back the string, uh, the stir. And so from this stir, we can actually, let's see. So from this point on, we know that we uh, we can return a vec of strings, uh, um, either an empty vec or a vec of, uh, of strings. And so we can go from the uh, stir, we can well, let's see. Uh, we want to sp split based on white space. Well, we could actually we could just split based on a on a space, but I guess we'll use split white space. Uh, it accepts more than just a, just a space. Um, I'm pretty sure it will only be space, but that's fine. So split white space. So this will give us an iterator, uh, an iterator of stirs. And so we need to, um, we need to go, f let's see. Right. It goes from it can go from a stir to a string, and so we can map this by calling actually the um, the function itself, and it should it should realize that it has a stir, and it will return. So it will map all the stirs to own strings in this case which is what we want. And, and then we just collect, collect these values. And that should actually give us back um, a vec of strings. Uh, deserializer, well. Okay. So this should actually uh, work as expected now. Um, yeah, so let's, let's also, um, let's print this. Let's, let's, let's test this first. Let's see. <clears throat> so we are going to need to give the token, which we have here. Uh, we don't need to provide the template yet. And so <clears throat> we should get back data that we need. Let's see. Yep. So we are getting back the title. So we didn't actually print the text, but um, since we now have to deserialize with and we are not getting an error, uh, that should mean that we are actually getting data. Although we could still get an empty fact, but I'm pretty sure that this should work. Um, we can test this out later. So let's move on to, so we now have the, <clears throat> the vector strings for the tags, which we can use in the template. So let's move on to the template itself. 
so for that we we do, uh, decided to use t Terra. So let's see. So we do we actually. Uh, no, we don't have it as dependency yet. So we've got the one the zero the zero beta three. <clears throat> there is um, right, and so we've got a couple of structs. Terra, the main point of interaction with this library. So create a new instance of Terra containing all the parse templates. So I'm guessing, in this case, we um, <clears throat> you can provide multiple templates, and using that you can then continuously parse data that you get in. Uh, in our case, we really only we are really only interested in one template and parsing it uh, some input once. So let's see if we let's see if we can find anything. Run as a one-off template. For example, a template coming from user input, right? Given a context. No problem with adding custom filters or testers. All right, so we don't need custom filters. Um, so this should be fine. There's also one of value renders a one of template, for example, a template coming from user input given an object that implements serialize. And so this is right, so this is the serial to serialize uh, trait. So we could actually try to use this one, um, which should give us the, um, which should actually give us the string right away, or at least a result. So one off. Well, I guess the example is wrong. So we need to use the one off value, although this is correct, it seems. So, yeah, so we need to use one off value here. So let's see. So we have the posts here. So then actually we could, in this case, And well, actually, this requires a, a string for input, <clears throat> uh, which we actually have. So that's we have a uh, no, actually, we have a path buff. So we are going to have to read this file. All right. So what we want here is some kind of um, reading some file and then putting that file into this one-off value here. Uh, so let's, uh, let's add use Terra here. And let's see. Um, let's see about reading a file. File create, <clears throat> read, pull some bytes. It's a specific buffer. Well, we just want to, we just want a simple read read file and read, get a string back or something. We don't really care about performance in this case. We don't allocate a buffer up front. We just want to get the file and get a string back. Um, should be possible. Let's see. Is there maybe a function? Right. Read the entire contents of a file into a bytes vector. Uh, read to string, here we go. So this is the one that we want. So an sref path. So we provided a path and then it will return uh, a string if it was able to read the file. Okay, now I'm not quite sure. Right, here's an example. So we do need to implement the, uh, we need to import standard FS. And then we do string parts, right? We only need this part. Okay, so I guess we'll do that actually before we start querying um, the API so that if it fails, 
we don't do is uh, an extra uh, users query. And so, uh, let's see. <clears throat> Interested to see sref path. And so I'm guessing we could actually use our OS string. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we can actually already use the, uh, the path buff that we get back here. I, at least that's my assumption. So we store this into the template. So we get opt and then uh, template, and this will return a um, let's see a template, and uh, well, actually we can already uh, do a match on this, I guess. And if we get a, um, if we get a string back, we return this. If we get an error, then we'll do for now, we'll do the same as we've done before, which is, uh, let's see, we'll do, We'll print the error that we got back, and so this would say um, error reading uh, template. Okay, <clears throat> so now we have a template which we can um, put into here. <clears throat> see if it still compiles the amount of dependencies is exploding quite a bit but it's fine All right, so I think we didn't. Uh, no, we didn't. So we need to use standard FS. And the other error was about uh, no Terra XML create, right? So this will be uh, Terra. And this needs to be a reference. So we're getting back a result here, that's fine. So let's see if it compiles now. It does, all right, so next part is, so we're getting back a result from this. Um, so this would be the output. And in this case, We again have a match. No, match. And we'll say, okay, uh, what is it that we get back? We get a, a, a result of string back. So this would be string. Well, I guess in which case we can actually just do a print ln. of this string. So we don't even need uh, don't need to assign anything here. We can just, this will be the final part of the code. And so we'll do another error handling here, um, which will be uh, error. So 
so this can be removed so this should be enough so if things work as expected we will get a <clears throat> we will get the value or the the uh, the, the compile template let's call this compiling and <clears throat> and if we get an error then we will we will print the error here so let's see if we can compile this we can so let's see then so now we actually do need to provide a template so actually if we did provide a, f uh, a fake string we, we should get an error back let's see if that's the case Right, error reading template, no such follow directory. All right, and now if we do provide the template.html, let's see what we get now. Um, yes. Filter render one off, context isn't a JSON object. Value path needs to be a key value object. Context struct hash map. Context isn't. Wait, did we? Oh, <clears throat> context is an adjacent object, but the context. We do implement uh, serialize for this object. And so I'm assuming we don't need to, to uh, implement a special serializer since this would be just be an array of strings in, in the uh, when it's serialized. So let's see. One of value. We provide the input, which is a string. The data, which is our, uh, our object. Now I'm wondering, the only thing that I That I could imagine is that uh, we implement serialize for our struct, but VEC of post. But I'm assuming VEC would have its uh, would have a serializer by itself. So I still assume that this would work. Now what we could do We could try um, let's see. Now the only problem that I'm uh, that we probably have now is that we have this five minute limit, which is obviously extremely annoying. So I'm thinking maybe we should just for now comment this out <clears throat> and read the file that we have. So we have this um, data.txt and so if we were to comment this out for now and say uh, let body equals uh, we'll do the same again to string and we'll do data.txt and we'll unwrap this. That should get us the uh, the data that we need. Right. Let's see if this works. So we're not using requests right now, obviously. Fill to render error compiling template. Fill to render one off. So yeah. So this. So I'm guessing now it's. Now it's probably failing because the template itself is expecting uh, an array of posts instead of a single post. So what we could do now is if we uh, 
if you create a new file, um, call it text test.txt, and we'll do um, I'm wondering how we how we would access this. So we have a post, but I'm not quite sure how do we actually access the values or how it, how is it, right. So it's just greeting. So user dot greeting. So in this case, our post could have a title, for example. Let's see if that works. Nope. It's also not really uh, explaining why it fails because we do have the deser we we do have the serialized uh, derived. Um, and I'm not. I don't expect this to be a problem. But let's see. No. Failed to render one off error compiling template. Okay. We pass in the template, we pass in the pose. Let's see if we can find an example on the uh, terror repository. Doesn't actually use the one off, but maybe we can see something that we do differently. So we don't have to provide a context because that's what. So the one off, <clears throat> you need to provide a context. And with the one off value, you, you can provide the, the object that implements serialize itself. Now, one thing that we could validate just to make sure um, is to see if we actually uh, if we actually get a proper pose back so let's do a print here Let's see what we get back. Right, so we do get a, a proper post. So we've got the href, we've got the title, the description, <clears throat> the tags are indeed uh, correctly deserialized. We've got the time. So this is all working. Um, and uh, Check this out. Yeah, so this is all, this is correct. So we do have a vector of posts, which is what we want. So the data is in there. We are sending this data uh, into into Terra, but it's not ex accepting. Fail to render one off. Can we somehow get a better? Let's see. Terror error. Question mark message. It's not really telling me, um, let's see, how can I 
actually, here we go. So this is actually printing the error. And so let's use this example to actually print what is actually happening. Uh, let's see. Uh, so this is error. So this should give us current scope. Uh, let's see. So we need to also implement the Terra context. Uh, the result actually. So we don't really need the context, but that's fine. Let's see. Nope. Type arguments. What did I do wrong? Interesting. Am I using? Oh, all oh right. I'm using. Uh, well, let's um, let's explicitly use. Hmm. How would we actually do this? So we are imp we are um, we're using the terror result in this case, and so we want to use the um, here we don't want to use terror result, but we want to use standard result, I guess. Where does result come from? Core result result or standard result? Like this. Still doesn't want to iterate. We'll let the name iter found for Terra errors in current scope. What am I missing? <coughs> there's something here that gives us a pointer sure this doesn't really this doesn't do anything with the error so let's get back to the documentation here um So this is what we get back. We get it. So, well, let's just quickly see if there is actually someone, if there is something that we can do here. Um, This is just the error that we that we get back, but ideally we would like to know more about this error. Hmm.
I don't really understand. It's not, I don't see anything implementing iterate or anything. So I'm not quite sure. So this is the result that we're getting back. So that's, so that's the result that we get from one off value. And if it's okay, we get a string back. And if it's not, we get an error object. Let's see. So this gives an error back. This is just to create some new errors. Some traits implemented. Let's go to the source. So we could get the kind of error. which implements debug. So we could just you just to start, we could say <clears throat> doesn't implement display, right? But we can return debug. Let's see what we get back. Context is an adjacent object, something we already knew. The value, all right, so this is this is the error that we already got. So the context is an adjacent object, the value passed needs to be a key. All right, so this is actually the error that we're getting now, um, which is because we, we are now uh, putting in a vec of posts. And if we do a single post, we actually get a, an error saying that the rendering failed. And so this is fail to render. So, all right, so we get a generic error back here. Okay. And so what is message in this case? <clears throat> There's nothing, it just gives us a string back. There's nothing we can get from this. All right. So why does it fail to render then? So it's actually, so it is using the correct, um, it is actually able to serialize this single post, but then it's unable to actually print this information. So I'm wondering, Let's go back to a quick example. Um, so let's go to template first. So it's using hello username here. So if we go back to the implementation here, let's see. Context add username. Right, this is this is using the uh, the context instead of the serialized object itself, which is what we are using. Um, so if we if we again go back to the one of one of value. See if we can find.
Hmm. I was expecting that we could just pass in the object. I'm still thinking that should work. not bothered to read me anymore. Let's see if the documentation can help us with anything. Mm. Rendering a one-off template. So this is again using the context. Add stuff to context. So I guess, I mean, we could do this, of course. I still don't expect it that we need to do this, but let's just get it to function first. So we could say, all right, so where, how do we add something? Right. So what if we said, um, well, Right, so we, we, we could test from now at least, we could say, let's add a, um, a title here, and that would be post0.title. And then here, you would enter the actual context. Uh, and this would be this will become a one-off. Find the reference, right? So we'll pass in the context here. And let's see what this gives us. All right, so this is working. So I'm still not quite sure why um, why we can't use one of value, but let's let's work with this for now, and we'll figure it out later. Uh, and later, probably being a, a third episode, uh, given that we're already going pretty long. Um, so yeah, uh, but we'll have to do. So we could just add a post here, and then. Just insert, insert it into the context. And then now if we use the actual template itself, let's see what we get. Cards not found in context while rendering. Cards, did I call it cards in my template? I did. Uh, which is pose. Uh, right, so card will become, well, card dot will become post dot. All right, let's try it again. Post dot link not found. Uh, that's correct, it's actually href. Post a title not found. That should not be correct. Right? We do, unless, with the serializer, re yeah, the serializer root rename it back to description, of course. Um, well, ideally, I would like to keep it title, but for now, all right, so let's just use description. And that also, uh, let's see, then we also have the extended for the description. Um, let's see if that works. Nope, uh, the date. Is that too, well, we call it time actually. 
Uh, yeah, sure. We'll leave that. All right, so we're getting uh, some HTML back. Let's let's pipe this to a, a test file. Um, well, this is looking uh, reasonably be okay, I would say. <laughs> we're still obviously we're still missing something here. Uh, the date obviously still needs to be parsed correctly. Um, somehow we have some set class. Let's see. Is this somehow rendered? Yeah, so this, this needs to be inside tags, although I'm not sure. Let's see. Uh, set right so this needs to be inside regular we'll leave this like this for now um, let's see well this plugin is annoying me again Again. All right. Um, this should be the last one. So this is looking better, uh, even though I'm pretty sure these should be set. We do have all the descriptions and we do have all the titles, so that's good. We also have the the links in them, so that's good. Uh, it's just the tags that aren't correctly, and this this one here. So let's see if, if my logic is off. So if if the index is even, so the index is a special value that you can access, which is just. Uh, starts at zero and it increments for every uh, loop in the for loop. And so if it's easy, even we start a new uh, row. Uh, and so the uneven ones get added on the right as a column and then the next one is a new row. And so if the loop index is not even, which would be the second, after the second card is, is added, we would add a uh, closing tr tag else if so let's see what what are we actually seeing here so this one only has one and these all have two and the last one has two as well interesting <clears throat> else if loop last I'm not quite sure if we need to uh, I'm pretty sure this well we don't we don't even get this these extra TD so it's not it's not actually adding it uh, what am I missing here The loop index is even. We add TR. Then we add the actual cell in the table. And then after that, we add a TR if the index is not even, which is correct. So we add, so we start with zero. We add TR, we add TD, we have zero, so we don't do this. We go to the next one, we have one, so this is not is not even, so it skips TR, it adds the second one, and then it would add the TR. So it's interesting that it's that's only adding one. 
for the first row. Let's actually see how um, how the HTML itself looks. Video some escaping here. We don't have any values in the inside here, which could indicate that we are um, that this this variable is scoped here. Um, I'm not too interested in this right now. Uh, this is just some Django templating stuff that we can uh, figure out later. Um, so I'm probably going to skip this for now. Uh, we are already pretty close in the uh, in the output right now. Uh, so we have all the data. Um, now I still want to add tests and I also still want to um, split up this main function into uh, into smaller ones so that they are uh, easily testable in unit tests. And I also like to figure out why the one-off uh, value isn't working. Um, so I guess that means we're going to do a third episode in this series. Um, which I hadn't expected, but all right, uh, these, these things happen, so it's fine by me. Um, now, um, let's just test one more time with, uh, with the actual API request. So we'll comment out this one and we'll do, uh, We'll pipe this to test two. Now, obviously this should still be the same data, but let's just make sure that it works. Yeah, so we do have to, this is the exact same data, of course, uh, but this is now coming from Pinboard again. Uh, so this is all working. Um, there's an empty one here, but that could be that there's just no, uh, no actual description. So, yeah, so we're going to leave it at this for now. Um, I'm going to uh, record a third episode in which we are going to wrap this up. Uh, it's only small utility, so it should be doable in three episodes. Um, so again, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, even if we were kind of stumbling along with some of the things that we were doing, uh, but that's part of, of the learning experience. Um, so next time we are going to, uh, first of all, we're going to fix the Django templating stuff I'll do some reading uh, to see what I'm doing wrong here. Um, and maybe maybe even if you saw it already, uh, leave me a comment on the YouTube video. Um, and I'll check it out. Uh, then after that, we are going to split up this main function into, um, into some smaller functions, uh, which can then re return their errors. Uh, and in main, we will just, um, uh, we will, uh, gather all these these separate functions, check if there's an error, return the error, and if not, we will return the eventual eventual value. We should clean up this stuff, and the, which will also uh, make it possible to test the separate functions uh, using unit tests, which we'll also do next time. Uh, there's also some stuff that we can still clean up. Uh, I believe uh, there is some stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure we can use Sailor directly with uh, with request. Uh, so I believe we can just um, tell request that this is a JSON response that we're getting back and it would, and we could ask it to go directly to a VEC of post. So we could skip this part, um, but that's something that we can do in the next episode as well. Uh, so again, thank you for watching. Um, uh, subscribe to my channel if you like this video and want to be notified of future videos. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.